So as the child grows older, one day when the child wants to study something, the subjects the child will choose. Then the child will say, Dad, I want to marry. Can you say no? You have to go back to Allah. That's what you have to do. Look at what Allah told you. What did Allah say? It is not your right to say yes and no from your own pocket. Did you know that? Why? That child belonged to Allah, not to you. Allah occupied you and tested you. I told you at the beginning two aspects. Test for the parents, test for the child. Allah occupied you and tested you by giving you an amana to make you happy for you to be able to say my child yet it's not your child it's Allah's child for you it's temporary for a short period of time for Allah it was before the child came to you and it will remain after the child goes away from you you understand for you it's temporary how long I don't even know Allah says I'm giving you something when I want it I will take it back without asking you when Allah takes a child away Allah doesn't ask you, look, I'm thinking of taking your child away. Allah takes it, gone. Subhanallah, you are left with an issue, another problem. You start to cry. It's normal. It's, it's, it's rahma to see the tears. Rahma. So the child comes and says, I want to marry. You need to go back to the instruction. Oh Allah, you gave me an amana. I looked after this amana. I grew up this amana. And what happened is, now this amana of yours, it belongs to you, is telling me I would like to marry. Many parents make a mistake. They say to the child, you are ungrateful. I looked after you. I brought you up. I sent you to school. I went to work and spent money on you. I did this. And today you want to marry someone I disagree with. That statement is foolish. That is foolish. That you are removing Allah from the equation. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah can tell you, hey, listen, I gave you the child. You cried for the child. You didn't have children. I gave you the child after so long. And I told you to look after the child. And I told you that I will take away control, your control of that child, because the control is supremely mine. I gave it to you for a period of time. When you had it, you should have done whatever. Then I told you, when the child wants to marry, you need to follow a certain way and a certain method. What is the method? Go back to the Prophet ﷺ. He says, إِذَا أَتَاكُمْ مَنْ تَرْضَوْنَ دِينَهُ وَخُلُوقَهُ فَزَوِّجُوهُ إِلَّا تَفْعَلُوهُ تَكُنْ فِتْنَةٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَفَسَادٌ عَرِيدٌ If someone comes to you with a proposal, you are satisfied with their level of deen, their religion, and their akhlaq, their character and conduct. Let it happen. For as long as the child is happy, your daughter is happy, the son is happy, for example. If they are not happy, it will not happen. Did you know that? You can never force a child to marry, no matter who. We have a system in some countries, in many countries, where it is a culture that the child will marry the cousin, whether you like it or you don't like it. It's over. From the point of birth, you are already fixed. You don't even know. That is against Allah's instruction. If they are happy, they can do it. No harm. You can marry your cousin in Islam. If you are happy, you can. I am married to a cousin of mine, subhanAllah. If you are happy, you can. If you are not happy, it will not happen. Don't force. You might talk about it and explain the merit of it. Don't force. My brothers and sisters, this is absolutely important. The ummah is suffering. I get thousands of complaints on a weekly basis. Thousands of complaints on this matter, on this subject. My father is forcing me. My mother is forcing me. I have a proposal from a person. His color is different. My parents have disagreed. Parents disagree. Look at the boy, talk to him, bring him. You find fault in him, talk about the fault. The color is not a fault. Bilal ibn Rabah was a man from Jannah. In the sense that the Prophet ﷺ, when he came back from Mi'raj, he made it clear. He said, I heard the footsteps of Bilal ibn Rabah in Jannah. Radiallahu an. Yet they got him married. They married him, subhanallah. They didn't look at his color and say because he was dark skinned. Have you ever asked yourself, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep some Sahaba of different races. Did you ask yourself that question? What was the point of having Bilal ibn Rabah in the middle of all the Sahaba? Why? Why did Allah keep it? Why was Suhaib al-Rumi, the European man from, from a room, why was he a Sahabi? Why did Allah have it? Just to show you that Islam is not about race. The race of Bilal ibn Rabah did not drop him down. And the race of Abu Lahab 
did not raise him in any status. You need to know this. So that is a test for us. I might not like something. I don't like something. I might say, you know what? Oh, I'm so upset. Why did you? Look, if Allah allows it and permits it, and if they want it, it is your duty to let it happen, whether you like it or you don't. You might talk about it. You might express, look, my daughter, I, inshallah, we can do better. We can this, we can that. Look, my son, I think this and I think that. You can explain and talk. You cannot become violent. You cannot threaten. You cannot be a person who just refuses without proper Islamic valid reason. That is an amana, and Allah will take that amana away. That person was born, like I explained at the beginning of this talk, it was not their fault where they were born. It was not their fault. They were born somewhere. Allah chose them to be born. How did they meet? I don't know. You don't know. Perhaps you need to find out. And if they met, subhanAllah, it's one of those things. Nowadays, online, if you did not guide your child the time you had control over the child, don't blame the child for, for having done something that you didn't even talk to them about. Many parents don't discuss the issue of marriage with their children age of 10 and 11 and 12. And guess what? From 10, 11, 12, they already have boyfriends and girlfriends because we don't even talk to them about this matter. Young age, they're already far ahead Far ahead. We think, oh, mashallah, everything is okay, everything is fine. You got them the phone, you got them the mobile, you got them the iPad, you got them the internet, you got the fastest Wi Fi in your home, and you just said, I love my child. Wait, there's a war coming. Allahu Akbar. There's a war coming. I'm not saying don't get them. Get them, but teach them how to use it. Teach them. Restrict them in a certain way, in a beautiful way. I have had cases of people who say, my children are banned. They're not allowed to have mobile phones. One day, the man caught his daughter with six telephones. Where did you get them from? Ah, someone gave me, that guy gave me, another guy gave me. They will give you. They'll give you the phone. Father, what do you think? You did not teach the child how to use the mobile. You just said banned. And you happy? I never got the phone. But you never ever looked. She has six telephones. Allahu Akbar. May Allah forgive us. May it not happen to us. So what I'm saying is communicate with your children and understand they are an amana from Allah. He has the right to take them away at any time from you. At any time. He can take them away. They are his children before they were yours. He allowed you to say my child for a period of time. Bas. Now let's continue. So as the child grows, mashallah, do you know what? Life is extremely difficult. Extremely difficult extremely difficult when you were born you came to this world this world is full of obstacles and tests it is a testing ground it's like a school every week you have an examination at the school every week you have a test every day some people have tests if you go to a top private school they will test you every day what you did yesterday so this is the best the dunya, Allah is going to test you one after the other. Every day you will be tested what you did, the, what you learned the previous day or earlier in that day or what you know. Allah will test you. Allah says, وَلَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ Surah Al-Baqarah. I'm sure you've heard this verse. I just said one word. You know, Arabic language, a lot of you might understand a little bit. But when Allah says, نَبْلُوكُمْ It means we will test you. And when He says, لَنَبْلُوَنَّكُمْ he is emphasizing it so strongly. We will definitely, definitely, definitely test every single one of you. It's going to be test after test after test. That's why you are on earth. Everyone seated here, including myself, we have issues we need to deal with. You have issues. Health issues we've all struggled with. Whether it's a cough, no matter what it is, we've all struggled with health issues. Nobody here can say I've never had a health issue since I was born up to today. Go and ask your mother. Maybe when you were little, you were a colic child. Maybe you used to scream. Subhanallah. This is the plan of Allah. Why? Because Allah wants to test you. What are you going to do? Some of us when we are tested, we get angry. Some of us when we are tested, we get depressed. Allah says no. There's no point in getting depressed. No point in getting angry. We could not all go to top schools. Agree? 
We could not all get certain qualifications that we might have wanted. We had to fit in somewhere sometimes, either because we didn't do that well. Not everyone's brain is exactly the same in capacity. Allah created you. You are good at something. What is it? It might be different from what I am good at. But Allah did not leave you just like that. There is something that He gave you. Sometimes you don't realize what He's given you. He has bestowed upon you some gift that others perhaps don't have to your level. Some people are very intelligent. Some people are good with their hands. Some people good at mathematics. Some people love biology, geography. Some people are very good at administration. Some people are good as teachers. Some people are good as, for example, computer specialists. Some people are good at sitting and watching. So they are guards, subhanallah. Alhamdulillah, I see you're smiling. I didn't say lazy. I said good at sitting and watching, mashallah. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. You still can have a job. You still can have a job. And you still can go. And how much will you earn? Let me inform you. At the beginning, I said, man is such, he can adapt. That's Allah's gift to you. You can adapt. The man who earns 50,000 Qatar riyals a month and another who earns 500 Qatar riyals a month, trust me, they are eating. Trust me, they are surviving. They get used to it. When that man who's earning 50,000, one day suddenly loses his job and he's not earning, he will struggle. If he's a mu'min, he will make the most of what he has. He probably has saved a little bit in a beautiful way because he knows that I'm a mu'min, I'm a Muslim and perhaps this is a gift of Allah. I need to make the most of it. And if he is not a mu'min or his iman is weak, he will start to cry. He will become depressed. He will become upset. He will not be able to survive. Not realizing that the one on the street who is wearing a uniform and who's sweeping, he's happy. Assalamu alaikum. He's looking at you. Time for salah, he puts his broom on one side and Allahu Akbar and he's so happy, he's delighted, mashallah. You give him one riyal, oh, jazakallah, thank you so much, sir, thank you, sir. He'll carry your bags, your plastic bags from the supermarket all the way to your hotel room in the middle of the heat and he won't expect more than one to ten riyals from you, subhanallah. And he's happy and delighted, but you are a human being just like him. How come he's doing that? That's a gift of Allah and he's happier than you are, yet you've got a thousand riyal in your pocket. That's Allah. Adapt. This is the test. This is something that really we need to think about. Don't become depressed at your test because your test is considered a gift for other people in their real life. Does it make sense? I have seen people without legs, wallahi. And they are so happy. I met a man who cannot move for many, many years. May Allah grant him shifa. He is paralyzed from top to bottom. He communicates with his eyes. May Allah grant him cure. But if you see him, you talk to him, you will be motivated because trust me, his contentment and happiness with Allah is far greater by the will of Allah than a lot of us who are seated here today. We have small issues, so don't become depressed. The issues are there, that's what the dunya is all about. I'm here to tell you today that hardships in your life would start from the point of birth even before anything is written against you, your hardships have started. You know, Allah says your deeds are going to be written at the age of maturity. When you mature, then the pen is lifted and things are written for you or against you at that age. But your hardships, they start before that. Innocent children, sometimes you ask yourself, why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has tested this child, the kidney failure? May Allah grant shifa to those who have kidney failure. Why is it that Allah has tested this child? Innocent child cannot see. Innocent child cannot hear. That all is a test. Allah knows why. It's a test for you who are around the child. As for the child, Allah knows that it is Allah's child before it came to you on earth. And it will go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And perhaps Allah will grant that child a lofty rank in Jannah. It is something amazing. And we definitely need to think about this unique system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, as the child grows older and the child starts asking a question and I got to the point of marriage and the child is saying, I want to marry, please consider what the child is saying. Those who say, I am embarrassed about what people will say, they need to understand. There is a greater embarrassment concerning what Allah will have to say or do. Remember this. People start saying back at home, what are they going to say? The people, Wallahi, are you really bothered to fulfill the amana of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you? If that is the case, watch out. 
Fulfill it in a beautiful way. If you have proper reasons, give them. MashaAllah, talk to your child. Don't use the fact, oh, you know, in our family, it doesn't work like this. Do you not belong to Islam as a family? 